Okay, at this point in your mathematical career, I hope you realize that what always comes is word problems, right? And you're in a 200 level math class, so the rigor is a little higher. So pretty much expect nothing but word problems, um, or at least, you know, half a test of every test is going to be word problems. So I wanted to take this at this moment to just kind of do one with you to kind of remind you of some good practices when doing a word problem. And I'm going to do it um, with in in mind of what we've been working on, which is systems of linear equations. So here's a problem I made up this morning. I was serving breakfast to my kids. So these numbers are kind of, I mean, the numbers are actually real. I picked them off of the box of kicks, um, cereal and the turkey bacon we were serving. Um, but the why the 300 calories and the 12 grams of protein, those I just kind of pulled out of thin air. Uh, later on in the course, we're gonna have to, we're gonna learn to deal with a more realistic scenario of saying, instead of saying, I want exactly 300 calories, we're gonna be able to say, I want less than or more than 300 calories and more than 12 grams of protein or less than and it doesn't have to be equal, but but for now, this is just, you know, we're working with what we got. We'll, we'll see this problem again later in a little re more realistic version. Um, the first thing I want you to do, whenever you're reading any word problem, I want you to find the variables. And keep in mind, the variable is something you don't know. Another way of kind of framing it is saying, what is the problem asking me to find? And not all the time, but most of the time, you can read the last sentence or close to the last sentence and get a pretty good idea of what your variables are. Right here, how many servings of each food should you give to your kids? So therefore, I'm looking for number of servings. Now let's see how many different kinds of food there are. Um, when building a breakfast menu for your kids, you're going to, uh, they're going to eat uh, Kix cereal that contain 110 calories with two grams of protein per serving. And they're also going to be eating turkey bacon that has 40 calories and six grams of protein. So don't get distracted by the calories and protein. That's not the variable. The question was how many servings of each food? So how many servings of kicks? So maybe we'll call one of our variables K for number of servings of kicks. And then the other variable, maybe we'll call it B for number of servings of bacon. Now this was turkey bacon, but it doesn't matter. And for your word problems, I want you to always write out your definitions because if you have X's and Y's on the page and I don't know what they mean, I can't grade them, especially if you made a mistake. It's very difficult for me to figure out meaning and I just have to start slashing points and I don't like to do that. I want to give you as many points as I can, but you have to show me you know what you're doing. So tell me what your variables mean. Now, next thing, when we build our equations, we now want them to be dealing with numbers of servings of kicks and numbers of servings of bacon. So two servings of kicks and three servings of bacon. How are those things related? So start looking for things they have in common. Well, kicks have 110, I'll do it in green to keep them color coded. Kicks have 110 calories and turkey bacon has 40 calories. So for me, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make a calorie equation. So therefore, what is the total number of calories I want? 300. So what I'm gonna say here is 110 K plus 40 B equals 300. And think about units, think about units. Cause this was, I'm gonna, you would not do this. I mean, you don't have to do this every time, but 110 calories, right, per serving, and K represents the number of servings, plus 40 calories, I'm just going to start shorthanding, do, 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 go away, 40 calories per serving times B servings equals 300 calories. Now, when you divide your units, they should, all these things th should match. You know the old adage of you can't add apples and oranges? Well, I can't add things if the units don't match. So when I divide servings with servings, I am left with 110 K with the units of calories plus the servings divided with servings leave me with 40 B calories, which is equal to 300 calories. So you can see here that the units are all matching. We're going to do 110 times K, which gives us the number of calories 
from the kicks. 40 times B, which gives us the number of calories from the bacon, which is going to need to equal a total of 300 calories. So that's the big idea how I set these up. And if you kind of keep that focus, um, it helps you as the problems get more and more complicated because you don't let the, comp the complexity of the problem get to you. You just kind of worry about building equations that have one commonality. All right, so now let's do this one again. But this time, um, let's do, instead of calories, let's look for something else they have in common. Because for the system of equations, since I have two unknowns, I'm going to need two equations. Well, another thing I know about the kicks Oh, I should be doing this in green, excuse me. Um, the thing I know about the kicks is that it has two grams of protein. I know the bacon has six grams of protein, and my total should be 12 grams of protein. So building it very similarly, 2K plus 6B should equal 12. So therefore, what I'm saying here is, um, you know, two grams of protein per serving, six grams of protein per serving, I need a total of 12 grams of protein. Great, how do I solve this problem now? Well, we should already know that, right? This is exactly the same types of problems we've been doing up to this point. So what we're gonna do is say, do I wanna do elimination technique or substitution technique? Your call, um, if you wanna pause the video and give it a shot, I'm gonna go ahead and do elimination. Because I see here, if I multiply this by 55, 55 times 2 is 110, so I'll multiply by 55 over here as well. See, I'm up here. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this up here, kind of get out of the way. So my top equation is not going to change. It's 110K plus 40B equals 300, not 200, 300. There we go. And the bottom equation is going to be 55 times, negative 55 times 2, so that's negative 110K negative 55 times 6, that would be a negative 330B, and 55 times 12, yeah, I'm not going to try to do that one in my head. I have a feeling I'm going to mess that one up. Let's see here, negative 55 times 12, negative 660. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and add these together and see what we're left with. So these come to zero. All right, let's, let's see, negative 330 plus 40, that would make a negative 290B. And then negative 660 take away 300, so that would be what, negative 360? So when I divide by negative 290, I'm going to get a negative 360 divided by a negative 290, and that's a good sign because a, I can't have a negative serving of bacon, so this is a good sign. Um, so that would leave me with 36 ninths. Now, go into the kitchen and tell your mother, spouse, whatever, that you want 36 29th servings of bacon and see what kind of look you get, right? It's going to be a funny one. So, so yeah, in the real world, you're, you're not going to give an answer of 36 29th slices of bacon. You're going to give a decimal approximation. So um, we're going to get that and say, okay, this is approximately 1.24 slices of bacon or servings of bacon. It, it slices of the package, but servings of bacon. Don't forget your units. And so we're going to say 1.24 servings. What does that mean? Now give me one and a quarter slices of bacon, and I'll get my protein. Um, now, going forward to get the other variable, to get our k, do not use your rounded values. Do not use your rounded values. That is a recipe for disaster. Use the exact amount of 36 29 and then round your solution. So when I go ahead and substitute this back in for B, uh, for you know, it's solving for K, where I have 2K is equal to, well, not equal to, plus, plus 6 times 36 29 equals 12. When I'm solving this portion, I'm going to use the, the, the fraction. And feel free, I mean, this class, you are going to need to work with fractions and whatnot, but it's not going to be terribly um, important that you can do it all by hand. So if you need, you know, when you're doing something like this and you want to use your calculator to help you out, that's absolutely fine. So we get that. So now we're going to have 2K equals um, 12 minus that number. So what I'm going to do is do 12 minus second answer. 
and I don't want the decimal approximation if I can avoid it I want a fraction um, so if you don't know how to do that what I just pressed was I pressed the math button and then I hit the enter for arrow frac and so it just takes whatever answer you previously had and it turns it into the fraction form so that's gonna be 132 20 ninths um, then so that's my value then I'm going to take that value and divide by 2 and look at that it kept it in fraction form so that's going to give us k equals 66 20 ninths now once again just give me that much cereal mom yeah no that's not going to happen <laughs> give me that many kicks so we're going to go back to math and I'm going to go arrow decimal and that will tell me approximately 2.275 or 2.276 seven six servings of kicks so to achieve our caloric and protein goal you need to eat one and a quarter strips of bacon and two and a quarter ish servings of kicks and you will hit 300 calories with 12 grams of protein so big idea big idea word problems start by defining your variables and don't get confused of what the problem's asking for. That's how you find your variables most of the time. Then build your equations, then solve the problem like normal, right? And then at the end, don't forget your units. You have to tell me what it means. Writing 1.24 and 2.276 on the page doesn't make sense. Writing it as an ordered pair doesn't make sense. I am no longer asking you to find an intersection of a line, right? I'm asking you to tell me how much to eat. So make sure you answer the question in a way that makes sense. This concludes section 3.1 of our of our uh, of our story. So this concludes the eliminate the review of substitution, elimination and solving in solving systems using graphing. So write your summary of what you what we covered here, make sure it's crystal clear to you so that way if you need to come back, you don't have to search through all of your notes to find something. You can just read your summaries and then know which ones to look in. All right, we'll see you in the next section, 3.2.